Good morning again, folks and family. This is Raymond X, the Prophet, again from my apartment bedroom. And it's 10, 12 a.m. on March. Eh, March. Still stuck in March again. And May 14th, 2020, on a Thursday morning. It's 10, 12 a.m. May 14th, on a Thursday morning, 2020. And this is the Word Today, Part 1, for March 23rd, 2020. The Word Today, Part 1, March 23rd, 2020. And let's go ahead and start in the Word of God today. It's 8 p.m. on this time, March 22nd, 2020, 8 p.m. during worship. I received this word. And you shall be hated by all men for my sake, for they persecuted the prophets that came before you. And you shall be hated by all men for my sake, for they persecuted the prophets that came before you. This is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 22 through 24, key verse 22. Luke chapter 21, verse 17, and once again Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 through 12, key verse 12. So let's start with Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. Matthew 5, 11 and 12, Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you, falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for good is your reward in heaven, for they so persecute the prophets who are before you. Matthew chapter 10, verses 22 through 24. Matthew 10, 22 through 24. And you'll be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute, in this, persecute you in this city, flee to another. First should I say to you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. Luke chapter 21, verse 17. Luke 21, verse 17. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. An external entry, March 22nd, 2020, 8.02 p.m. Beware when men speak well of you, for brother will be against brother. Beware when men speak well of you, for brother will be against brother. This is found in Luke chapter 26, I mean Luke chapter 6, verse 26, Luke 6 and 26, and Matthew chapter 10, verses 21 through 22, key verse 21, and verses 34 through 39. So let's start with the book of Luke chapter 6, verse 26. Luke 6 and 26, Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. Matthew chapter 10, verses 21 through 22, and key, and key verse 21, verses 34 through 39. Matthew 10, 21 through 22. Now brother will deliver up brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. Luke, uh, Matthew chapter 10 verses 34 through 39. Matthew 10, 34 through 39. Do you not think that I came, bring, that came to bring peace on the earth? I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. In the external entry, March 22nd, 2020, 8.04 p.m. They will deliver you to the synagogues and courts. They will kill some of you. They will deliver you to the synagogues and courts. They will kill some of you. This is found in Matthew chapter 10, verse 17, Mark chapter 13, verse 9, and Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 through 31, key verse 9. So let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 17. Matthew 10 and 17. But when they do deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you shall speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 through 31. 
Matthew 24, verses 4 through 31. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you not are troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilence, pestilences, and earthquakes to various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to the tribulation and kill you. And you'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel, the kingdom, will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in the Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great tribulation which has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be, unless those days were shortened, no, flesh will be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there, do not believe it, for false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, yet possible even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. Therefore, if they say to you, Look, he is in the desert, do not go out. Or, Look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes to the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give us light, the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will be appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Mark chapter 13, verse 9. Mark 13 and 9. But watch out for yourselves, for they will deliver you up to councils, and you'll be beaten in the synagogues, and you'll be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony to them. Okay, folks and family, the Spotify worship song I have for you this time around is by Ella Limebear. What Love Looks Like, the single version. So, What Love Looks Like, the single version by Ella Limebear. And I'll post a link to that in the description box below as well as the YouTube video link you see listed here. And the next general intro I have for you March 22nd, 2020 at 8.08 p.m. This is the word I've received from the Lord. His love for us is eternal. His love for us is eternal. This is found in these books of the Bible. Psalm 136 verses 1 through 26. Key verse 24, Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 13, Jeremiah, 31 and 3, Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 17, John 3, 16, John, chapter 15, verse 13, Romans, chapter 5, verse 8, Romans, chapter 8, verses 35 through 39, the book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 20, and finally, the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 19. Psalm 136, verses 1 through 26. Key verse 24. Psalm 136, verses 1 through 26. Thanksgiving to God for His enduring mercy. O give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. O give thanks to the God of gods, for His mercy endures forever. O give thanks to the Lord of Lords, for his mercy endures forever. To him alone who does great wonders, for his mercy endures forever. 
to him by whom wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endures forever. To him he laid out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endures forever. To him he made great lights, for his mercy endures forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endures forever. The moon and the stars to rule by night, for his mercy endures forever. To him who struck Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercy endures forever, and brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endures forever, with a strong hand and with an outstretched arm, for his mercy endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea in two, for his mercy endures forever, and made Israel pass through the midst of it, for his mercy endures forever, but overthrew Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea, for his mercy endures forever. To him who led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endures forever. To him he struck down great kings, for his mercy endures forever, and slew famous kings, for his mercy endures forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endures forever, and Og, king of Bashan, for his mercy endures forever, and gave their land as a heritage, for his mercy endures forever, a heritage to Israel his servant, for his mercy endures forever. He remembered us in our lowly state. For his mercy endures forever. And rescued us from our enemies. For his mercy endures forever. Who gives food to all flesh. For his mercy endures forever. O give thanks to the God of heaven. For his mercy endures forever. Amen. The book of Isaiah chapter 41 verse 13. Isaiah 41 and 13. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3. Jeremiah 31 and 3. The Lord has appeared of old to me, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, loving kindness I have drawn to you. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17. Zephaniah 3 and 17. The Lord your God in your midst. The mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. John chapter 3 verse 16. John 3 and 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John chapter 15. Verse 13. John 15 and 13. Greater love has no one than this, than lay down one's life for his friends. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Romans 5 and 8. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans chapter 8, verses 35 through 39. Romans 8, 35 to 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which in Christ, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Galatians 2 and 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 19. Ephesians 3 and 19. Who being past feelings have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Sorry about that, folks. That's Ephesians 4, verse 19. Ephesians 3 and 19. To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19. The next journal entry, March 22, 2020, at 8.09 p.m.
Jesus did for us what no other man can do. His death on the cross ensured us the victory. Jesus did for us what no other man can do. His death on the cross ensured us the victory. And this is found in these books of the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 54 through 58. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1. 1 Chronicles chapter 22, verse 11. Psalm 98, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 31. John chapter 16, verse 33. Romans chapter 7, verse 25. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 11. Acts chapter 27, verse 35. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15. And finally, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 54 through 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 54 through 58. So when this so when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has passed has put on immortality, there shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1. 2 Kings 5 and 1. Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. First Chronicles, chapter 22, verse 11. First Chronicles 22 and 11. Now my son, may the Lord be with you, and may you prosper and build the house of the Lord your God, as he said to you. Psalm 98, verse 1. Psalm 98 and 1. O sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 31. Proverbs 21 and 31. The horse prepare for the day of battle, but deliverance is of the Lord. John chapter 16, verse 33. John 16 and 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. The book of Acts, chapter 27, verse 35. Acts 27, 35. And when he had said these things, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Romans chapter 7, verse 25. Romans 7 and 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans chapter 8 verse 37. Romans 8 and 37. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 51. 1 Corinthians 15 and 51. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we all shall be changed. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 11. 2 Corinthians 1, 11. You also, helping together in prayer for us, that things may be given by many persons on our behalf, for the gift granted to us through many. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. 2 Corinthians 2 and 14. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ, and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse fifteen. 
2 Corinthians 9 and 15. Thanks be to God for His indescribable gift. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. Ephesians 5 and 20 Giving thanks always for all things to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, folks and family, the last journal entry is a bit lengthy, so just kind of bear with me here. March 22, 2020, at 8, 10 p.m. This is the word I received during worship. He overcome death, hell, and the grave. He overcame death, hell, and the grave. And it's found in these many books of the Bible. Revelation chapter 1 verse 18, Matthew chapter 5 verse 22 and 29 and 30, Matthew chapter 10 verse 28, Matthew chapter 11 verse 23, Matthew chapter 12 verse 40, Matthew chapter 13 verse 42, Matthew chapter 16 verse 18, Matthew chapter 18 verse 9. Matthew chapter 23, verse 15 and 33. Matthew chapter 25, verse 30, 41 and 46. Matthew chapter 27, verses 46 and 50. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 43, 45, and 47. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verse 5. Luke chapter 16, verses 1 through 31. Luke chapter 23, verse 43. The Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 29. The Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 36. The Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 25, 28 and 29. The Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 6. The Books of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1 through 47. Acts, chapter 4, verse 12. Acts chapter 9 verse 5 Romans chapter 3 verse 23 Romans chapter 5 verses 1 through 21 Romans chapter 6 verses 9 and 23 Romans chapter 8 verses 38 through 39 Romans chapter 14 verse 23 First Corinthians chapter 1 I'm sorry First Corinthians chapter 15 verses 14 26 51 and 55. Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. Revelation 1 and 18. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And had the keys of Hades and of death. Matthew chapter 5, verses 22, 29, and 30. Matthew 5 and 22. But I say to you, whoever is angry without... But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoever says to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. Whoever says you fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Matthew 5, 29 and 30. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it out from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members should perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Matthew 10 and 28. And do not fear those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Matthew chapter 11, verse 23. Matthew 11 and 23. And you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. Matthew chapter 12, verse 40. Matthew 12 and 40. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Matthew chapter 13, verse 42. Matthew 13 and 42. And will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Matthew chapter 16, 
verse 18. Matthew 16 and 18. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Matthew chapter 18, verse 9. Matthew 18 and 9. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. It is better for you to come into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. Matthew chapter 23, verses 15 and 33. Matthew 23 and 15. What are you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites? For you travel land and sea to win one prophesite. And when he has won, you make himself twice as much as the son of hell as yourselves. Matthew 23 and 33. Serpents, brood of vipers. How can you escape the condemnation of hell? Matthew chapter 25, verses 30 and 41 through 46. Matthew 25 and 30. And cast the unprofitable servants in outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 25, 41 through 46. And he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in naked, and you did not clothe me sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick and in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Surely I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Matthew chapter 27, verses 46 and 50. Matthew 27 and 46. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Matthew 27. And fifty, and Jesus cried again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. The Gospel of Mark, chapter nine, verses forty three, forty five, and forty seven. Mark nine and forty three. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It's better for you to enter into life maimed, rather than having two hands to go to hell, into the fire that shall never be quenched. Mark nine and forty five. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life main, rather than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that shall never be quenched. Mark 9 and 47. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye, rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Luke chapter 12, verse 5. Luke 12 and 5. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after he is killed, has power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. Luke chapter 16, verses 1 through 31. Luke 16, 1 through 31. He also said to the disciples, There was a certain rich man who had a steward, and an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So he called him and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you I have, you can no longer be steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do for my master is taking the stewardship away from me? I cannot dig, I am ashamed to beg. I have resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, that they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one his master's debts, debtors to him, and said to the first, How much do you owe my master? He said, A hundred measures of oil. So he said to him, Take your bill. And sit down quickly and write fifty. He said to another, And how much do you owe? So he said, A hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, Take your bill and write eighty. So the master commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. And I say to you, Make friends for yourselves, unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. 
and he is unjust, and what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? If you have not been faithful in what is not a man's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and be either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now the Pharisees, who were lovers of money, also heard all these things, and they derided him, and he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts, for what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. The law of the prophets were until John, since that time the kingdom of God has been preached, and everyone is pressing into it. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one tittle of the law to fail. Whoever divorces, divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery. And whoever marries her who is divorced from her husband commits adultery. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus full of sores who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off in Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father, Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. And he said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let, him, let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to them, If they not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they persuade it, though ones rise from the dead. Luke chapter 23, verse 43. Luke 23 and 43. And Jesus said to him, Surely I say to you, Today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 29. John 1 and 29. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him, and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John chapter 3. Verses 1 through 36. John 3, 1 through 36. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time in his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you can hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it, go where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, how can these these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and do not know these things? Most assuredly I say to you, We speak what we know, and testify what we have seen. And you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven, but he who has come down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven, and as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, 
but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is, this is the commendation that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. After these things, Jesus and his disciples came in the land of Judea, and there he remained with them and baptized. Now John also was baptizing in Anon, near Salem, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized, for John had not yet been thrown into prison. Then there arose a dispute between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purification. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who is with you beyond the Jordan, to whom you have testified, behold, he is baptizing, and all are coming to him. John answered and said, said, A man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this say of mine is fulfilled. This joy of mine is fulfilled. Therefore, this joy of mine is fulfilled. He who must increase, but I must decrease. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. And what he has seen and heard that he testifies, and no one receives his testimony. He who testifies, he who received his testimony has certified that God is true. For he whom God speaks the words of God, for God does not give the Spirit by measure. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Mark chapter 5, I'm sorry, John, John chapter 5, verses 25, 28, and 29. John 5, verse 25, which is surely I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear the, the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. John 5, 28 and 29, do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who hear in the graves will hear his voice, and come forth those who have done good and to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil, to the resurrection of condemnation. John chapter 14, verse 6. John 14 and 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 47. Acts 2, 1 through 47. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting, and there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, this, the multitude came together and were confused, because everyone heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans, and how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya, adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and Prophesites, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues, the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, Whatever could this mean? Others mocking said, They are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and heed my words. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, and it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, 
and the moon shall in the moon of blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. It shall come to pass that whoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved shall be saved. Men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did do him in your midst, as you yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands, have crucified and put to death, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. For David, saying concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart rejoiced, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also will rest in hope, for you will not leave my soul in Hades, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make, my, make me full of joy in your presence. Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. He, foreseeing this, spoke concerning the resurrection of the Christ, that his soul was not left in Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, which of which we are witnesses, therefore being exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. For David did not ascend into heaven, into sin of the heavens, but he says himself, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, to make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know that surely that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is to you and to all your children, and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord God, our God will call. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about three thousand souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided among all as anyone had need. So continually daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Acts 4 and 12. Nor is there salvation any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Acts chapter 9, verse 5. Acts 9 and 5. And he said, Who are you, Lord? The Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Romans 3 and 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 21. Also Romans chapter 5, verses 25, 28 through 29. Romans 5, 1 through 21. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith in this grace, in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. For when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly, for scarcely for a righteous man will die, or one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when 
we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned, according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. But the free gift is not like the offense, for if by the one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God, and by the gift of grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned, for the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. For by the one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so through one man's righteous, righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness, to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Romans chapter six, verses nine and twenty-three. Romans six, verse nine knowing that Christ have, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. Romans 6 and 23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39 Romans eight thirty-eight and 39 For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans, chapter 14, verse 23. Romans 14 and 23. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats, because he does not eat from faith, for whatever is not from faith is sin. Finally, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 14, 26, 51, and 55. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 14. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty, and your faith is also empty. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 26. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 55. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? Okay, folks and family, the Spotify worship song I have for you today is by John Mark McMillan. And the song is called Pilgrim. The song Pilgrim by John Mark McMillan. And I'll post a link to that in the description box below, as well as the YouTube link you see listed here, the video link. Okay, folks and family, if you made it this far, congratulations. It's been almost an hour since we started this sermon. Once again, this is the Word for the Day, Part 1, for March 23, 2020. The Word for the Day, Part 1, March 23, 2020. And stay tuned for Part 2 of these series following this video. Thank you all for your one hour of time. Very valuable indeed. God bless you on everything you do. Take care of yourselves. God loves you and so do I. Jesus is coming soon.
He's coming again on the clouds of fire. Get ready. This is your day of salvation, your day of repentance. This is your day of decision making. Keep that in mind. Be good and kind to one another. Accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior today. I did when I was 12 years old. Okay, folks, I'll let you go. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe out there. God bless you all. I love you. Bye-bye for now.